How many of you have experienced deja vu before? Okay, a good number of you. This is in line with survey research, which suggests that roughly two-thirds of people report experiencing deja vu at some time or other in their lives. Deja vu is generally defined as a feeling of having experienced the current situation before, despite realizing that this is actually new. So for example, maybe you're visiting the Louvre in Paris for the very first time in your life, yet you're plagued with this mysterious feeling that you've been in that exact place before. My goal has been to scientifically understand deja vu. Why does it happen? What is its underlying basis? For how many of you is this definition here incomplete? For how many of you is deja vu accompanied by a feeling of knowing what will happen next? Okay, a good number of you. You're not alone. A lot of people claim that when they experience deja vu, it's accompanied by a feeling of knowing what's going to happen next, including in survey research. I became interested in this aspect of deja vu when I began getting contacted by random people who had come across my research and contacted me to tell me that this is their personal experience with deja vu and to ask me if I have any explanation for why this occurs. One man in particular called me because he'd had a jarring experience. It was so jarring, this feeling of knowing what would happen next, that uh, he couldn't stop thinking about it. And so he called me to tell me about this experience. He'd gone on a hunting trip for the first time. He'd never been on this particular trip before, and he felt like he had done this before. As he was boarding the plane, he felt like he'd done this exact thing before. He felt he had sat in that very seat on that very plane before. He felt that those very passengers surrounding him were there before, and they were wearing those same clothes. And he also felt he knew that the flight attendant was about to approach him. And not only that, but he knew what she was going to say. The situation bothered him so much, it was so jarring, that he began researching deja vu on the internet to try to find answers, and that was how he found me. In my talk today, besides my research on deja vu and what it suggests about deja vu, I have three larger points that I'd like to make. One is that deja vu can be studied scientifically. The second is that even the sense of premonition can be studied scientifically. And finally, don't underestimate the power of science for discovering how things work. There have been many proposed causes of deja vu put forward over the years, all of them challenging to investigate scientifically. These range from the idea that deja vu may be the result of spontaneous brain activity, I like to call this the glitch in the matrix idea, to the idea that deja vu results from an unrecalled memory. So for example, maybe upon visiting the Louvre for the first time, the reason you experience deja vu is because you're failing to recall the fact that you saw those same scenes in the movie The Da Vinci Code years ago. And that's responsible for this feeling of deja vu. <clears throat> um, my goal was to experimentally investigate this particular hypothesis, the unrecalled memory hypothesis, which no one had ever done before. But there were some hints in survey research that were supportive of this general hypothesis. For example, survey research suggests that people who report having deja, deja vu more frequently tend to travel more and to watch more movies. And this is consistent with the unrecalled memory hypothesis because people who travel more and who watch more movies have more potential memories in there to serve as sources of deja vu. My starting point for investigating the, uh, ex the, the unrecalled memory hypothesis of deja vu was a very specific theory that had been put forward 80 years ago, but never scientifically tested. It is the idea that deja vu might be driven by an unrecalled memory for a situation that spatially resembles the current situation that you're in. So for example, maybe you're crossing the street in panel B here for the first time in your life, and you have a sense of deja vu. That sense of deja vu may be driven by the fact that you previously experienced a very similar scene, such as the one shown in panel A. It has a very similar spatial layout, and that may be responsible for the feeling of deja vu. 
The reason this particular hypothesis, this spatial resemblance hypothesis, had never been scientifically tested is very likely because scientists have largely assumed that deja vu is too rare an occurrence in real life to be investigated experimentally or to duplicate in a laboratory setting. I wondered if this was actually true. There's a very similar type of subjective phenomenon that you may be familiar with. It's called the tip of the tongue experience. The tip of the tongue experience is when you feel as though a word is right there, on the tip of your tongue, about to be recalled, and you can't quite access it. Researchers have been studying tip of the tongue experiences for many decades, and the way that they do this is to create circumstances in the laboratory that are hypothesized to produce tip of the tongue experiences, and then to have people self-report on when they're experiencing tip of the tongue and when they're not uh, in order to test these hypotheses. I wondered if the same approach could be taken with deja vu. So for example, why couldn't we create the type of spatial resemblance that's shown here in this figure in a laboratory setting and have people self-report on when they're experiencing deja vu in order to test this hypothesis that spatial resemblance can produce deja vu in the absence of recall of the source? And this is what we did. We used virtual reality. We used virtual reality to create spatial resemblance among different scenes and different experiences within the context of an experiment. And we asked participants in this experiment to self-report on when they were experiencing deja vu. This is an example of how we created spatial resemblance. This is a bird's eye view of an aquarium in panel B, which maps spatially onto a reception area shown here in panel C. This is the first person perspective of the aquarium and the first person perspective of the reception area. Here are some other examples. An alley that spatially resembles a hallway, a courtyard that spatially resembles a museum, a prison that spatially resembles storefronts, a bowling alley that spatially resembles a subway station, a bedroom that spatially resembles a clothing store. So participants would be immersed in a large number of scenes in the first phase of the experiment, such as the bowling alley or the aquarium or the bedroom. And then later on in the second phase of the experiment, they would be immersed in new scenes, some of which spatially resembled older scenes that they had been immersed in previously. And our primary question was whether when immersed in a scene such as this clothing store here, when people fail to recall anything specific, so this clothing scene maps on spatially to the bedroom scene that you saw earlier, if the person fails to recall that, are they more likely to report experiencing deja vu when there is this spatial resemblance than when there is no such spatial resemblance? And it turns out that they are. Participants show a higher probability of reporting experiencing deja vu for scenes that spatially resemble earlier experienced but unrecalled scenes than for scenes that do not. We next asked, well, if, if deja vu can be driven by an unrecalled memory, can it occur because we actually did experience this very thing before, but we forgot? To investigate this, we used the same paradigm, but we added a new twist. Some of the time, in the second phase of the experiment, we had our participants immersed in the same exact scene that they had been in earlier. So for example, maybe the person would be immersed in the bedroom scene. They were in that exact scene sometime earlier in the experiment. Our interest was in those instances in which people forgot. They're saying, this is a new scene. I was never in this scene before. I don't recognize it. When people are in the exact same scene and they forgot that they were actually in this earlier, are they likely to report experiencing deja vu? It turns out that they are. In fact, they're even more likely to report experiencing deja vu in these cases than in cases in which the scene merely spatially resembles an earlier scene. This suggests that the more similar an experience is to one in memory that we're failing to recall, the more likely it is that we'll have a deja vu experience. This also suggests that maybe sometimes we experience deja vu because we did do this very thing before and we simply forgot. I want to turn now to that very aspect of deja vu that I mentioned toward the beginning of this talk, the feeling of prediction. Many people claim that when they experience deja vu, it's accompanied by a feeling of knowing what will happen next. I wanted to find a way to experimentally investigate this. No one had ever done it before. 
What we came up with uh, to, to experimentally investigate this idea was we thought, why not use the scenes that we'd used in these previous studies and try to create a dynamically unfolding situation in which we could examine the possibility of prediction. So for example, participants would view video this time of a particular navigational path through a scene so it could dynamically unfold in that way. So in this bird's eye view of the aquarium, perhaps the navigational path might look something like this, ending in a leftward turn. Then later on in the experiment, when, when, when presented with video in this spatially resembling room, such as the reception area, the video follows the same navigational path, but it stops short of that final turn. Our question was, could people show predictive ability that's based in memory? So in other words, could that unrecalled memory of the aquarium from earlier drive not only an increased likelihood of deja vu with that reception area, but could it drive an ability to predict what the direction of that next turn should be? We found three things in this study that are of interest. The first was that deja vu was more likely when scenes did spatially resemble earlier scenes than when they did not. That wasn't surprising. It replicates these other studies that I've already shown here. However, they did not show any predictive ability. People could not predict whether the next turn should be left or right. However, they did feel like they could predict. When they were experiencing deja vu, they felt strongly that they could predict the direction of the next turn. People gave ratings of their sense of knowing what the direction of the next turn should be, and those ratings were much higher during reported deja vu states than reported non-deja vu states. We call this the deja vu illusion. It appears that deja vu states bias people to think that they know what will happen next, even when they don't. So I'd like to, uh, to, to remind you of these three main points that I wanted to make here, that deja vu can be studied scientifically, that even the sense of premonition can be studied scientifically, and don't underestimate the power of science for discovering how things work. I'd like to end with a quote by the famous computer scientist Alan Kay. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. No matter how familiar a situation might seem, or no matter how strongly you might feel that you know exactly how this is going to go or exactly how this situation is going to unfold. Our experiences don't just unfold before us in a predetermined manner. Our actions and our choices can change the course of our futures. Thank you.